wearing a cravat. If also, men yes. can grab this era and keep it going, they will be spared centuries of torture by necktie. <laughs> you also notice that, uh, turn around, his, his uh, collar is not round. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost square, mm -hmm. in, in the, as opposed to mine is round. Mm -hmm. That's because uh, it gets in the way less. Uh, but even so, uh, you'll have you'll find colors right. of all different shapes. You will. Yes. And it What's the deal with the colors? Why were the colors so huge and so wide, especially on men? I mean, like because they weren't roughs. No, the first place. No, they are the result of the rough flattening out yeah. over two decades. Right. You know, the rough had been wide. You flatten the ruff, you stop ruffling it, you let it down, you end up with a wide collar. Why did the uh, ruff get started? Yeah. Uh, when, when the king wore it, everyone wore it. Uh, why did the ruff get started? Uh, it was an artifact of the introduction of starch. Ah! And people could show off that they could afford to have their collars starched and ironed with the equivalent of a curling iron. And so the ruffs really were so almost a figure eight kind the, of a they they were, they were to show off. You could afford to start and curl your collar. <laughs> and, and so the collars were all detached. They weren't part of the garment no, anymore. Yeah, no, the colors were, were all detached. And so, or was it a modesty kind of thing? It's, it's like, like why, why do we wear ties? It's the same question. Was, it was the custom. Ties, That's the collar. Blake. Yeah, you know, like, that, Blake. like the rat stars. He's been wanting to take that out for about an hour. To get dressed. That you need servants. See, it's just muslin that I made it on. Take care of the rough. And I don't do it. My servants do it. So it's a way of saying I've got people that we'll pass okay. the the collar around. The other thing I want that? you to look at on the shirt like by a Rolls Royce. is that it is no, not I'm, fitted. Let's say Jaguar. Real Anakin Trump. I'm yeah, passing around right now right a don't copy, you the Rolls Royce? a picture what? of a don't woman's smock. <laughs> period. <laughs> the smock <laughs> that went under the outer garment. Under the doublet. Under the uh, yeah. Under so under her jacket. Women didn't actually wear doublets per se. Men, well, it, men women wore doublets, fashion. women wore jackets. But, there but comes the, it, a jacket of the period, but this is what went under. Right. As a matter of fact, the, from, from what I've read, the reason it has tassets on it is because it's mimicking armor. Okay? It's a skirt and a jacket, but the jacket has flats to look like the armor that the men were wearing. Okay? But anyway, that's just a fashion is, thing. The clothing was not fitted in the modern sense. You can sit down uh, now, but it, which meant it was fitted to the body. It was a big, loose garment. It was fitted to the body by drawstrings, by laces. It was much more forgiving as far as sizing went than certainly the clothing of my youth. I have pictures of myself in the 1950s wearing a fitted sheet dress in which literally there was not a quarter of an inch of margin that involved a zipper up the side, a zipper up the back, and truly, if you gained or lost five pounds, you changed a dress size because the fitting was so precise. And the darts? In this period, yeah, darts. In this period, women's clothing, for example, you do not require maternity clothing. No. If you get pregnant, you just loosen your laces. The smock is big enough. If when you lose the weight again, you pull the laces a little tighter makes, and it fits. Makes the whole secondhand clothing market much more forgiving as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because you don't have to size it that much. The next set that I have, I have gone over this in the Baines Bar so often that my mind reels. There are so many wise asses out there who on the basis of review of the movie 
a girl in a pearl earring <laughs> about Vermeer's painting. painting. Tell me that women in this era were required to cover their hair. Granville arrived in a period where women wore uncovered hair and short hair, to which one guy actually had the goal to tell me, oh, but if you have found a portrait of a woman with her hair uncovered, she must have been a prostitute. Marie-Louise de Tassi, as portrayed by Anthony Van Dyck. <laughs> Two English noblewomen. High class prostitutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Henrietta Maria of We're England as a younger woman. Uh, uh, short hat. hair too, by the way. Uh, she does have a hat, but it's uh, on the side of her head. <laughs> People, like when so all these women days. walking around at the mm -hmm. convention well, with their hats on the side mm -hmm. of their head. Maria Anna, our heroine from Bavarian Crisis. Uh, a random Dutch woman, a group of performing uh, musicians, not professional musicians in this case. Uh, got out of your <laughs> it's not just uh, no, you think? <laughs> it's not just uh, you know Fred Frederick the Great who performed Ferdinand music. Ferdinand the Third of Austria was a musician and a composer. In his case, too, some of the music he composed is still performed oh, Henry uh, today, one way or the other. And as my ultimate and final set of women with hair, I have Mary Ward, the founder of the English ladies, oh, yeah. <laughs> and her group of English ladies as they met to found this religious order. Every one of them wearing short hair with it completely uncovered. Why? That's too cool. <laughs> why? Oh, why do you see many pictures of women with their hair covered? Because they were working in a dirty environment and they were keeping the dust off their head. Or it, it's cold. Or it's cold. And they're wearing a hat. But mainly when you see those bandana kinds of things, it's because they were working and they were trying to keep the dust out of their hair. Because it was cold and hard to wash in the cold. Right. Okay. It was cold. A man's embroidered nightcap with mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brain. It was cold in New England in the 1830s still. When, when Ivor was doing his Little Ice Age presentation yesterday and talking about the early thermometers, the early instrumental record, most of those guys that had those expensive thermometers had them mounted in their hallways. Not so, outside. Not outside. So when those guys were saying it's 23 degrees, that was inside the house. You know, so, um, you know, yeah, because if you left it outside, it could get broken. Right, and and you see recordings even into the, even into this century of people waking up to the basin in the bedroom frozen. Oh, uh, I grew up in a farmhouse that was built in 1874 by my great grandfather. Uh, one great distinction between the house in which I grew up and all those stories about colonial New England in which people woke up to frozen water was that my family were committed to the idea that there was absolutely no reason to be uncomfortable if one could be comfortable. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather built the house with a chimney for a wood stove in every bedroom. <laughs> there was a boiler attached to the big iron wood stove in the kitchen. In the winter, 
our numerous family, week by week, it was one person's turn to get up early. That person went into the kitchen, started the wood stove to heat the boiler, went from bedroom to bedroom, and started the stoves. Wow. Then, having made that round, the person returned to the kitchen, filled metal pitchers from the boiler, and delivered hot water to each of the bedrooms. We had no running water. We had no it. outdoor plumbing. But each of our bedrooms had a, a Victorian furniture creation that was a kind of bathroom in a closet, if you can call it that. In other words, we had a basin, a cabinet in which to hide the chamber pot, shelves for the soap and, the, and all that, and we had spouts into which we could pour our used water, which ran out of the house and onto the flower beds. But this wasn't true of all of your classes. <laughs> Not of all of them, but I mean, it could be done. Oh, but sure, sure. With, with the technology available and without any great expense. That is, it did not add much to the cost of building a house to introduce a spout through which you could pour out your, wa your wash water. Mm -hmm. I just, my, the house my father grew up in was built by his father, the baker. And trust me, not as clever. <laughs> well, this was in central Missouri. I know, I know. I'm just, yeah, he was trying to make a room. As I say, and the difference is not that bad. Our, our family just never saw any reason why, why they couldn't be comfortable. I think my grandfather was just lazy. Now, my mother, cheap, who was German born and grew up in New York City, considered this the lowest of the primitive oh, sure. when she married my father. She put up with this as long as my grandfather lived, but believe me, on the day after my grandfather's funeral, she had the plumbers in, and they got running water and flush toilets within a week. <laughs> yes. um. I have in the past mentioned that the wearing of pants by females would be a very big issue. Is no, it okay? wouldn't. Okay, okay. That's, well, uh, no. I was hoping on something more. Uh, uh, more uh, I'll give you something that. more substantial. Uh, let's go back to our friends Wilhelm Bettine, Bernhard of Saxe Weimar, and Duke Ernst. What was their mother doing when she died? What was their mother doing when she died? We haven't a clue. She was jumping a creek on her horse, riding astride in her uh, riding outfit. I've told you this before. What did they wear? Women wore that people, women by and large who rode in this period did not wear the equivalent of a Victorian riding habit 